So today we're going to talk about geometric sequences. The difference between an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence is a geometric sequence has a common ratio. So a common ratio means now instead of adding and subtracting the same number each time, we're now multiplying by the same number. And we're only multiplying. We're never going to think about dividing because for example, in this case where you have the sequence 81, 27, 9, 3, you can see the pattern is dividing by 3. We're not going to say that it's dividing by 3. We're going to say that it's multiplying by 1 third. So my common ratio is going to be 1 over 3. Now if we go ahead and move on to the next example, A, it asks us to find the first three terms of the sequence. So here I have my sequence. It's geometric. It's in the format of my formula given. This two-thirds, this is my first term. So A1 equals 2 over 3. You could have also gotten that by plugging in 1 for N. So 2 over 3 times 4 fifths the 1 minus 1. And 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. Anything to the 0 power is going to turn into 1, and that's why you end up with the 2 thirds. So for A2, what you're going to do is you're going to take 2 thirds times 4 fifths and do 2 minus 1. Make sure you're really careful with your order of operations here. Um, you should be able to type that straight into your calculator, but if you can't, make sure you're doing the exponents first. So by doing that, you should end up with 8 over 15. Do it again to find the third term. Now you're just going to plug in 3 to your formula, and you should end up with 32 over 75. Okay, now we're going to look at the next example, A. Write a rule for the nth term of the sequence, then find A7. So you've got this sequence here. You have to find the pattern. You have to find the common ratio. So you can hopefully see that each time we're multiplying by 5. Now sometimes your common ratio is not going to be as clear. So something that you can do to find your common ratio is you could take the second term divided by the first term that's always going to give you your common ratio. So if you tried that in this case, 20 divided by 4 does in fact equal that common ratio of 5. So in order to write the rule of a geometric sequence, you need two things. You need your ratio and you need your first term. So you can see in this sequence that 4 is my first term. Once you have those two things, you're going to simply plug it into the formula that's provided for you. And we're going to leave a sub n. a sub 1 is 4. r is 5. I like to always put my ratio in parentheses because especially if it's negative, that's going to make a big difference. And then we're going to have n minus 1. So this is my rule. The next thing the problem is asking us for is to find A7. So to figure out what A7 is, you're simply going to plug in 7 for N. So 5 to the 6th power, multiply that by 4. If you really do this step by step, you end up with that. So A7 is going to equal 62,500. So there are two answers for this problem because there were two questions. Okay, so the next example is asking us to write a rule for the geometric sequence given one term and the common ratio. Notice here we are given the common ratio, and in order to write a geometric rule, you need the common ratio and your first term. So we're going to go ahead and use our formula to find our first term. So A5, that's going to be our AN, that's the last term that we have, equals A1, we're looking for A1, R is 3. Now you want to make sure that this 5 and 1 are what's in your exponent, 5 minus 1. Those are always going to match. So I really want you to write that step so that we keep all of our exponents the, the same. So now we can go ahead and swap out A5 to be 54. A1 is in fact what I'm looking for. 
and we have 3 to the fourth because of the 5 minus 1. So we can go ahead and solve for a1. 3 to the fourth is 81. So we'll go ahead and divide by 81 on each side. We'll simplify this fraction down to be 2 thirds. So now that we have our first term is 2 thirds and our ratio is 3, we can write our rule. a sub n equals our first term of 2 thirds times our ratio to the n minus 1. Okay, now if we move to the back and we look at example A, we're going to write a rule given two terms. Remember what you need in order to write a rule. You need the common ratio and you need the first term. So the first thing we're going to find is the common ratio and we're going to do that by using our given information. So AN is going to be the last term that we have which is A6 equals the first term we have which is A3 times R. That's what we're looking for so we'll leave that as R my exponent is going to be 6 minus 3. Again, remember, we want 6, 3, 6, 3. We want those to match. Now we can go ahead and swap out what we know. So a6 is 30, 72. a3 is negative 48. And we'll have r cubed. So go ahead and solve for r by dividing by negative 48 on each side. So you'll end up with a negative 64 equals r cubed take the cube root of each side to go ahead and solve for r, and you're going to get that r is negative 4. Now that we have what our common ratio is, we need our first term. So you can do that by using either one, the third term or the sixth term, doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and use the third term. So a3 equals a1. So now I have a1 back in my formula because that's what I'm looking for r is negative 4, and my exponent is 3 minus 1. Again, these need to match. I'm going to go ahead and swap out a3 for negative 48. So negative 48 equals a1 times negative 4 squared. Make sure you have this negative 4 squared in parentheses because when we evaluate that, that negative is now going to turn into a positive. So we're going to go ahead and divide by 16, and we're going to get that our first term is negative 3. Once we have our first term and our ratio, we can go ahead and write our rule. So a n equals a 1 times r to the n minus 1. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at B. Notice again we're given two terms. This one has a little twist to it. So we're going to find our common ratio and our first term again. So we're going to use our AN. AN equals A1. Now that's not A1, but that's the first term that we have. Times R, and my exponent is going to be 4 minus 2. Again, keeping these the same. We can swap out what we know now. Negative 3 equals negative 12 times r squared. Go ahead and solve for r by dividing by negative 12. So now I'm going to get that 1 fourth equals r squared. So when we take the square root, this is where the catch is. You have to remember that when you take a square root, you're going to end up with plus or minus. So we actually have two possible ratios here, which means we're going to have two rules. There's no set way that says you can just change the sign, so you really need to make sure you plug each ratio in to find the matching first term. So I'm going to go ahead and set it up with r equals 1 half and r equals negative 1 half, and I'm going to solve for my first term. So a2 equals a1 times positive 1 half, exponent of 2 minus 1. Go ahead and swap out a2 to become negative 12. Now to get rid of that 1 half, we're going to go ahead and multiply by 2 on each side. So we're going to get negative 24 equals a1. So I can write my rule that has my ratio as positive 1 half and my first term as negative 24. So one of my rules is a n equals my first term negative 24 times my ratio of 1 half. 
the exponent of n minus 1. And then I'm going to go over here and do the same thing now with my ratio being negative 1 half. So a2 equals a1, my ratio of negative 1 half, exponent 2 minus 1. You want those to match. Um, a2 is now going to become negative 12. My exponent is 1, so I'm left, just left with that negative 1 half. Go ahead and multiply by negative 2 on each side now to get rid of that negative 1 half. And now we're going to have a positive 24 equals a1. It's not always going to be the opposite sign, so you do need to make sure you plug that in. Now I've got my first term, my ratio. I can go ahead and plug it into my formula. So a n equals positive 24 times my ratio, which was negative 1 half to the n minus 1. So I do have two answers here because I have two ratios and that comes from this squared and this plus or minus. Okay, we're going to go ahead and quickly look at this word problem. Um, I want you to take notice that um, the through 2003 should be through 2008. So in 1990, the total box office revenue at U.S. movie theaters was about $5.02 billion. That $5.02, that's your first term. That's your starting term. And then the total box office increased by about 5.9% each year. So you want to convert that 5.9% into a decimal. Now, since it's increasing, we've got to go back and think a little bit into the chapter 4 logarithms, exponential functions, and we've got to think about increase equals a growth factor. And a growth factor means that we had 1 plus our rate. So my r is actually going to be 1 plus 0 0.059. So when we write our rule, my rule is going to be my first term, 5.02, times 1.059 to the n minus 1. So this right here, 1.059, is very important. That's indicating that it's growing because of the growth factor 1 plus my rate. The second part is asking for the total box office revenue in 2008. So you have to figure out that your n is actually 19. That's coming from 2008 minus 1990 plus 1. Top minus bottom plus 1. So to go ahead and figure out that revenue, you're just going to pop 19 in for n. And when you evaluate that, we'll go ahead and stick with the nearest hundredth. You're going to get 14.09 billion.